Hey, so how, <laughs> how have you been, Jessica? I've been very well, thanks. How are you? Well, thank you for coming on the show, and I'm, I'm very, very well. So you just thanks released your brand me. new album back in November, and um, it's gotten some pretty good reviews already, and uh, I've seen you live. I was at your live CD release party, and it was fantastic, so talk to me about the album. Thank you. Um, it's uh, a long time coming. Um, some of the songs were written back in 1998 all the way up to um, very recently, this year, this past year. Um, so it was a big labor of love. I really enjoyed making it. It was amazing. This year has been such a whirlwind, and so I feel like this album is just sort of um, the culmination of this entire year, getting band together, starting out playing shows, um, well, I celebrated my first year anniversary of that this year, actually. Um, so it's been just over a year, but getting back into playing guitar after a seven-year hiatus and all kinds of things. So it really does feel like a dream come true, making making this recording. It's a six-song EP, and it's called Dear Reverie. Um, and I feel like that title is all about... Um, this being a dreamlike state and it being sort of addressed to that. So Dear Reverie, um, excuse me, uh, is, it's like you said, six piece or six song uh, EP. Mm -hmm. What has been the, what was the hardest song to, to really put together or to, you know, to record, produce, write on this, on this album that, you know, really, really struggled you and really, really challenged you as an artist to, to finish? <laughs> You know, I think it was probably Babyface on this one. The song itself, writing the song, came really quickly. Um, the bare bones of it anyway, with the acoustic guitar and the lyrics. Um, I started writing it on the St. Clair West streetcar. And by the time I got home, I had two verses, a chorus, a melody. And then I spent the next two or three hours putting the guitar part together in the process, um, angering the neighbor upstairs who was banging on the ceiling. Um, and, but then, um, my bar chords are an issue. <laughs> so, so I, I was struggling with the bar chords. Um, they're much better now, but at that time, uh, I was still sort of getting my bearings on the guitar. So it took me a while to get it rehearsed enough so that I was happy performing it. Um, and then some time passed, and I'm putting together the full band arrangement. And uh, the first pass, it was hilarious. We all sort of stopped halfway through the song and just started laughing. It was so brutal. It all fell apart. Um, so it took a few few different revisits, um, but I feel like we nailed it on this recording. So <laughs> I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out. Now the album artwork is done by our co-host, or um, not our co-host, but our good friend Josh Skinner, who hosts his own show, The Original Soundtrack. What was it like working with Josh as an art, as an artist to basically what essentially is another artist and helping create something um, that you have a vision for, which is you know what you want on the album cover, and he's trying to create it for you. But you know, he, was there sort of like an input? Like, did he ever say, you know, I think you should maybe go with this color? Or was it sort of just like this is what I want, put it together? Yeah, I went in uh, with an open mind working with the other artists on this, and I should note as well that the photography was done by somebody else. So the photography was done by Jillian Foster, um, and then Josh helped me put the whole package right. together. So I first met Josh. We were downtown. We had lunch, and we started conceptualizing different ideas, and the photos hadn't even been done yet. So um, I didn't really know what I wanted, and so we worked together very easily um, it was sometimes a little frustrating just because we didn't really know where to start, but um, eventually we got it all going. And, and then by the time we were done that lunch, I had a pretty clear idea what the sort of feel was that I wanted to go for. So he was really instrumental in getting the whole thing going, which was awesome. And so it was really lovely, too, because um, working with other artists in different areas of art, is always a lot of fun because I don't know anything about design and it's great to, to sort of see how the emotions that I want to present can be presented in, in a visual format. Well, absolutely. And it, and it turned out really, really well. Like I'm very, very imp impressed with it. I, I really, really like it. I Me think, too. um, was purple like the color that you wanted to go with? Like, was it, was that because you chose that dress or like, cause I think personally, I think it works. It suits us like the album really, really well, but thanks. Um, sort of like, was there, was there a different, like a difficulty picking colors and, and that sort of thing? 
And there was in the beginning, I wanted the whole idea was from this dream I had way back in the day. I was like seven or eight. And in this dream, I was wearing this sweater I used to have that was brightly colored triangles. Now, this is like the 90s, so it was appropriate. Fair, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. It was really hideous now. But um, <laughs> all these brightly colored triangles, it was like yellow and orange and pink. And, um, and in this one dream I had, it was this dingy sort of like... Uh, ghost of Christmas past kind of thing um, and the sweater was glowing so what I wanted to do with the album cover was take that dreamlike state and because it was applicable to the title and um, but at the time I was like okay rustic with bright orange yellow and then I sort of ran out of funds and couldn't buy a new dress so I went with my favorite current dress which was purple and I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. And by the time the photos came in, I was like, you know what? Purple and silver. Let's do this. It's perfect. Well, it does work really well. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about it now. You've also been featured in a magazine cover called yeah. Roots of Hair, which is pretty awesome. And uh, talk to me what it was like to, you know, being an artist and everything. And now you get this chance to really be the, the main, the, basically the model in the front of a magazine. What was that experience like for you? And what was it like sort of working with the group that you worked with? It was wild, um, and it happened all in, like, the span of a few days. So it was this big whirlwind. Um, I'm still kind of – I just saw the cover for the first time just now, and I'm totally thrilled. It looks amazing. Um, the girls did a great job, and it was amazing working with the team because I'd never met anybody before, um, and we just had a really good time sort of getting to know each other and getting the vision, and, and it was fun stepping into that model role where um, – I just had to channel this emotion of having sort of hair anxiety over what kind of hair I wanted to have. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> now, I got to ask, because it's, it's really interesting, guys, like part of the magazine, in one half you have straight hair, and one half you have curly hair. Now, were you, did you have your hair, did you come into the school like that <laughs> with your hair, one half straight, one half curly? And, and if so, did you go on transit, and did people look at you weird? <laughs> Well, um, I didn't come that way. I actually straightened half my hair when I got here, but I did leave that way. So there what were some the, questions. Were, what, were the, what were the reaction of people just in transit? Just like, what is this girl doing? Like, why? Like, is, <laughs> are you on drugs, lady? Like, I got a lot of smiles. Nice. <laughs> and then I got home, and it was. Um, I think it was Monday night because there were a whole bunch of musicians in my house, and it's rehearsal night on Monday nights at my house. So. Um, I walk in and I took my hair down really dramatically and everyone just kind of went, what the? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> very, very nice. Well, it turned out very well. And actually there's, there's more pictures. There's one in the inside cover of the magazine as well, which is a very nice photo of you as well, which kind of illustrates the point that you do have. <laughs> it wasn't just like it was Photoshopped or anything. It, that's, that's really it. <laughs> yeah. Which is great. And there's of course one of you with the, uh, the people that contributed to the magazine. Um, mm -hmm. what do you think is the next step for you going forward now that you've got, you're on the front cover of a, of a magazine now, you've, you know, you've got your CD. Uh, what's the next step for Jessica? Oh gosh. Um, you know, this past couple of weeks have been, um, very surprising. So it's got me sort of wondering where the next step is. The plan is, um, oh, by the way, if you want to see this magazine cover, I just tweeted it and I think did Radio Nation just tweet about the website as well? Oh, uh, no, but we will. Oh, nice. We're following so them, either know. way. Um, we, and I'm at Spezzy, S-P-E-Z-Z-I-E. -E. Um, I just did a response video to, um, this YouTube video that went viral in India called Kolaveri Di. Um, so it's from the girl's point of view responding back. Um, and as of today, it had like 20,000 hits. So I've been wow. meeting a lot of people <laughs> the last couple of days from all over the world. Um, so it's been really exciting. So who knows what's going to happen um, in 2012. But my big plans are um, a tour Ooh. in Ontario and New York State. And um, I would really like to um, start working on the full length album as well. Now, do you have ideas? You have, like, we were before you we went on air. Actually, you, you uh, were guitaring a brand new song. So, do you have <laughs> lots of songs lined up for the next album? I do, and I think it's going to be a tough choice as to which ones make the cut um, and which ones from Dear Reverie end up going on it as well um, in their fleshed out new versions. That's something I wanted to ask. Actually, was like, what? Mm -hmm. is, like, how tough is it? I mean, for this one, for your current album. 
there you put six songs in there. Now I'm sure you've obviously written more than six songs. It doesn't really. What's the choice like between you know? Could you have gone with more songs or, or how does talk to me about that process? Because I really don't know what that's like. Cool. Uh, yeah, you know it's a long kind of painful process sometimes but it's so much fun to get into that space where you're trying to piece together something that you know others are going to enjoy um and that was the biggest thing for me like I've been I spent a year playing shows playing these songs and getting the response from people um so I picked six songs that kind of created a story arc like that I would put into show format and play in that order um and that people enjoyed the most out of all the tunes that I've written um overall and that I've gotten the best feedback about um so for me the biggest thing about putting together an album thus far in my thinking is um getting and sort of an arc going getting a story going getting um songs that fit together nicely in the playlist so that and the ones that are favorites too and the ones that are my favorite because i think that's pretty important <laughs> well, it's your album I mean, theoretically you can do whatever you want with it right it's true but i like like you mentioned there you know there really is sort of has to be like some sort of like a logical almost an order that things <laughs> go in um is that a is that really a big challenge because you know it's not just like i'm gonna throw six songs in here and wh- whatever works works and like if you like it you like it you like it you you know like you have to really really think about it so i mean what was the challenge in, in putting together been picking these six songs that went on your album amazingly this six song combination and the order is the first one i came up with but throughout the process and showing it to other people and getting feedback and and then after because I chose the songs then recorded them Mm -hmm. and we didn't record like extra songs or anything to pick the best ones so um and then depending on how well we played them it would have affected the order and stuff so um but the biggest thing was a titling the album which was really difficult and b your leading song because like I chose to lead this EP with Brace Yourself and some of my most trusted music advisors and friends and they were all like really you want to like that's the first thing people are going to see when they look at your album is brace yourself like that sounds a little arrogant doesn't it and I'm like well yes but that's not really what the song is about and then in the end I was like but it's a great lead song I think I have to do it fair enough veto (laughs) and so be stuck with it anyway and it is the first song on the (laughs) album which is pretty awesome it is brace yourself so i mean i'm gonna pick it up and be like i'm in for a ride here right (laughs) so um we're gonna take a quick commercial break here on radio nation we're gonna kick it off with kaisy jong's song crush on you so we're gonna play that momentarily and then come back and then did you want to perform a song live seeing as you did bring your guitar here i would love to now join live in studio with jessica speciali so welcome back jessica thank you all right so um of course here on radio nation we uh we always interview the the artist, and so we're going to continue that interview and then get a quick chance to hear uh, Jessica Speciali live on the guitar. Awesome. So we mentioned off the air that you, um, you're you going to go on tour, and you've been looking to you know sort of get to know other artists and, and mm-hmm. open for them. What's the relationship like with you with other artists? I mean, are you really open to working with anybody? Is there a specific artist you're looking for? How does that work for an artist? Um, I'm at the beginning of that journey, uh, but but I have, you know been playing around Toronto and and going to open mics and meeting other artists and working with other artists for me has been a really big piece um getting to know people learning you know together and and playing together um and I really I like to keep it obviously within the similar genre um just so that my fans enjoy the other the other artists music as well um but for the most part, yeah. If we get along or if we sound similar, like let's hook up a show and and uh, and play for each other. You know, I think that's awesome. Now you mentioned going down to you want to go down to New York State as mm-hmm. well. What is the uh, challenge with you know going to the United States? Is there a, is there a difficulty in you know crossing the border? You know, like how does how does a, how does an artist set up to go to an international country like like America, even though they're not so international? But for sure, you know, you're leaving our borders. So how does that work? Well, I heard something about a visa. <laughs> there, yeah, I do know yeah. that. <laughs> and um, paying a, f- a fee to bring your guitar. Um, 
because I'll be going down for probably for business. I wouldn't be surprised if if a couple of clubs paid us or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends. It really depends on on the situations. Um, you know, if I'm going down to open for other artists and it's pay what you can uh, at the door, then it's not really being reported and it's not necessary that I have to report it, I suppose, um, for tax purposes. But um, but I th- I'm sure we'll run into a couple of little things that'll have to get worked out along the way. Um, the exciting thing is that, um, and even as far down as Philadelphia, I have a friend down there and we're talking about hooking up a show or two. Um, and so it's not like I'm going in cold and I will have other artists to mm-hmm. be able to ask what's going on and, and it'll be a great learning experience along the way. So. Well, exactly. And if, uh, if, I don't know if you know, but we've interviewed many, many artists from the United States, actually probably more yeah. artists from the United States on this show than actually Canadian artists, which is very, very interesting. So we've interviewed people from all across America. So I'm sure um, if you go on our website, www.radionation.ca, you can find some of them and I'm sure you can just, you know, show, give, get, get a hold of one of them. I'm sure there's people out there that would love to collaborate with you or even to, you know, set up some sort of a, a performance at a venue. That would be fantastic. So, um, there you go. That's awesome. Thanks. Yes. Man. That'd be very great. Welcome. So, all right. So we're gonna play your play the song for you. You're gonna play <laughs> right. the song live. We're gonna play "Brace Yourself" live on air, which is Absolute. pretty awesome. We've been talking about this song uh, before we went for our musical break, and and then it actually played during that musical break too. So, which is amazing. It would be pretty fitting to play it live exactly. for you here in the studio. And not only that, but nothing against it, but your voice is uh, outstanding, and it is great <laughs> to hear live. So, this gives our listeners a chance to hear you live instead of you know. Not if they can't make the show, now they can hear you live. And then yeah. just listen to the recording over and over again. Woo-hoo. By the way, go. I'm playing live in Toronto on Thursday at the Garrison, 8 o'clock. If you're around mm. right before Christmas. Um, All right, take it away, Jessica. Yourself. A jaw reaction for a fraction of the price.
And there you have it. And that was a fantastic performance. There Thank you, you go. And that is Jessica Speziali with Brace Yourself Live on Radio Nation. So my final question, actually, we're going to do really two quick questions. We do usually do a lot of fun, quirky questions now here on the show. Cool. So what is your favorite color? It's green. And why? Um... I have no idea. It sort of flip-flops between green and yellow. And I think um, yellow is my, like, extremely peppy, happy color. And then green is my, like, down-to-earth, kind of, like, connected color. Feeling connected. Um, <laughs> three places you've always wanted to go. Italy, Guyana, both of which my parents are from. Um, and I really want to go to... I've always wanted to go to London, England. Fair mm-hmm. enough. If you're on an island and you can only bring three, four things with you, what would they be? <laughs> it's a pretty standard question. It's, yeah, that's a good one. Um, I would definitely bring some flip-flops and uh, a bathing suit and maybe an iPod with everlasting battery. You wouldn't bring your own guitar? No. Why? I'd make one. <laughs> oh, there you go. I'd make one. I'd break a string or something, and then it would be all over. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Um, one thing you really, really like about your album. You can't say that you made it because you made it. Uh, <laughs> um, one thing I really like about the album. I really like... Um, I just love the instrumentalists that I had on it. I love the crunch of the guitar and the boom with bass and the drums are ridiculously solid one artist or one it can be anybody actually but one person you you really really look up to as an artist and why hmm. okay little known fact about jessica speziali my favorite band of all time is hansen interesting yeah um i they're my answer hansen hands down longevity it's crazy the music that they're still making is great and it's not necessarily on the radio but it's evolved and it stayed with me the entire time I guess I can still relate to it and I love the sound um and their voices and the vocal harmonies are insane I love it fair enough that's a good answer then I never really I (laughs) definitely didn't expect that one but it's good um so I guess you're pretty big fan of them when they were really really popular i was very 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 good then. bouncing on the couch <laughs> <laughs> when we were back in the 90s and we were both kids i remember i was i remember i wasn't jumping but I, I do remember those days well um one thing are you gonna do during this christmas holiday season that is really exciting i am gonna do nothing and it's awesome <laughs> sometimes doing nothing is the best answer you can get because like doing nothing doesn't really happen anymore it's true it's very rare <laughs> and then you always say you're gonna do nothing and then you end up doing something it's true i hope to at least get one day where i don't get on my pajamas yeah That's just goal. <laughs> i remember i remember after you know school was over i, I said to my mom i'm not doing anything today <laughs> this is a rare moment in my life i'm gonna lay here and do nothing and i'm gonna i'm going to love it totally because the next day i have to do way too much <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's just the way it goes all right and one thing about yourself, other than the fact that you're a big Hanson fan, that your fans don't know about you. <laughs> oh. Um, one thing that my fans don't know about me. I'm trying to think through all these little secrets that I've already told. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Huh. I don't like raisins. You don't like Why? I hate them. I can't stand, especially the squishy ones. It's the, the ones that come in those red little packets. The squ- oh, you know super what? I, oh, yeah, the white ones. Can't stand yeah. those. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. But I do like the really shriveled up ones, the ones that come in, like, the Raisin Bran cereal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> covered in sugar, no flavor. <laughs> That's why, because they're covered in sugar. This, they taste good. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of raisins either. <laughs> Remember as a kid, though, you ever, like, take a grape and then put it in the sun and then watch it, like, just dissolve yeah. into, a, like, a raisin? I thought that was really cool, but then I didn't eat the raisins. I don't like raisins that much either. True. I always played with the little figurines of the raisins. You remember oh, yeah. the raisins? Yeah. Super cool. <laughs> but I hate eating them. And I love grapes. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So that's it for uh, this edition of Radio Nation. I'm your host, Nicholas Pescod. 
Keep following us on Twitter at at Radio underscore Nation, and uh, you can check us out and find all of our updates, www.radionation.ca as well. Uh, next week in studio, we have Bianca Nagy joining us to talk more about sexual health in Oakville and the clinic that she's helped start. And then we have Elizabeth Langham joining us live on the phone, and uh, that'll be a great series of interviews, so uh, stay tuned for more information about that. Uh, don't forget to check out the original soundtrack, Fridays at 5. I'm your host, Nicholas Pesca. Jessica, thank you very much for coming on the show.